Elon Musk, a self-made billionaire, is today's world's richest man. With his net worth reaching a little north of $300 billion at its peak, he may very well be sitting on that spot for a long time. This massive success of his is credited to Tesla, a leading clean energy company that focuses on electric cars and other innovative products. Listed as one of the world's most valuable businesses, Tesla has acquired the interests of investors worldwide. One of its main selling points is Elon's ability to take in constructive criticism from just about anybody and making sure he acts on it. There's even a video of him acknowledging an insight from a touring YouTuber on one of his other companies called Space Exploration Technologies Corp, otherwise known as SpaceX. Elon Musk, however, is more than just a billionaire. He is a visionary who aims for humanity's transcendence, looking towards space and beyond. But enough talks about the future, we're here today to learn about the rich and extravagant history of the wealthiest people in the world and the foundations they've left for the future generation. You'd be surprised at how far behind Elon is to the top players of the past. Here at Bear Luxury, we make sure to tackle every aspect of becoming a billionaire. We will showcase the exciting history of money, influence, and power. Number 10. William the Conqueror – $230 Billion Conqueror, a title that brings terror to those who hear it. Yet there is another side of this title that others often overlook. Overwhelming riches. William the Conqueror, the terrifying yet equally alluring King of England, was born around 1028. He was the first Norman king and his estimated worth was around $230 billion. He managed to accumulate these overwhelming riches by pillaging the lands he had conquered. At 38 years old, William has managed to conquer the whole of England a quest that took the lives of more than a thousand men. The things that made him alluring to some, however, was when he was crowned king, he enacted a lot of policies that changed England. He outlawed slavery to the relief of many. But because he couldn't speak English, well, he forced everyone else to speak Franklish. He erected more than 500 castles in England and Wales during his prosperous reign. They were a sight to behold for subjects and enemies alike. He grew to be one of England's most powerful landowners ever. He was well known for eating and dressing well too, to the point where after his death in 1087, Thebes instantly took off with his clothing and jewelry, leaving him bare for the worms to conquer. Number 9. Osman Ali Khan – $236 billion One from a fairly recent part of history, the billionaire Osman Ali Khan was featured and dubbed by Time magazine as the world's richest person back in 1937. He was also known as Hyderabad, India's last ruler. So just how rich was he? His wealth was reportedly in the range of $236 billion, according to historical researchers. However, his wealth was appraised by the very prestigious Guinness Book of Records to be around $750 billion. That's more than double of Elon's total liquidated assets. With the amount of wealth he had, few of us could ever have imagined the life that Osman Ali Khan led. He always had in his possession the Jacob Diamond, which is the fifth largest polished diamond in the world. Osman Ali Khan kept the priceless diamond in his office as a paperweight, contrary to the common concept of mounting it on a ring, necklace, or glass case. He had other jewels as well, apparently. He housed a staggering collection worth an estimated amount of $2 billion. He was the proud owner of a sizable collection of diamonds known as the Nissan's Jewels, which were handed down from ruler to ruler. There were 173 jewels in this collection, including 2,000 carats of emeralds, numerous pearl-encrusted armbands, buckles, and necklaces, particularly the Atleta necklace with 465 pearls. But all of these are but a fraction of Osman's wealth. Osman didn't always embody his fortunes. Even though he had large palaces, he had over 300 servants and owned 50 Rolls-Royce vehicles. He had a reputation for wearing the same hat for almost his entire life, eating off of tin plates, pleading with visitors to smoke cigarettes, and even knitting his own socks. During his reign, he brought electricity, airplanes, and railroads to the region he ruled. He was also well-renowned for giving a large portion of his money to religious and educational institutions all across India. Number 8. Nikolai Romanov – $300 billion 
The Romanovs, headed by the Tsar of Russia, Nikolai Romanov, are undoubtedly the most famous of Russia's wealthy families. Though there have been others, they held the most influence and are the most historically significant. Unfortunately, one of the reasons they were attacked and killed was because of their riches, estimated at more than $300 billion. Given the crisis Russia was under during his reign, that amount was the reason he and his family were targeted. Many contemporary historians saw him as a poor, ineffective leader, but they weren't the only ones to think so. Even Nikolai himself was quoted as saying, quote, I am not prepared to be a czar. I never wanted to be one. I know nothing of the business of ruling. However, that doesn't mean he didn't take pleasure in his riches despite him being unfit and unwilling to rule. He earned 200,000 rubles a year in pay and had an additional 20,000 to spend on clothing and other necessities. However, he routinely went over his 20,000 ruble budget, frequently spending an additional 150,000 rubles. Why was it so infuriating to the masses? Well, for comparison, high-ranking generals made only 5,000 rubles annually while manufacturing employees barely made 500. His spending money was 40 times the typical worker's yearly wage. So what precisely did he buy with all that money? Essentially anything you can imagine. He frequently spent 20,000 rubles on having clothes and uniforms for the military created just for him. His wife joined him on these shopping excursions as well. She was rumored to buy jaw-dropping jewels worth more than 40,000 rubles each. Then there are the occasions Nikolai used his fortune on. His crowning was the most lavish in Russian history. A choir of 1,200 individuals was assembled to serenade the newlyweds, and 24 tons of silver and gold dishes were brought in just for the occasion. He raised all civil debts in honor of the 300th anniversary of the dynasty and ordered the production of almost 1.5 million gold, silver, and bronze medals to mark the occasion along with mass-produced mugs, handkerchiefs, and postal stamps. He was also known for his extravagant meals, prepared by an assembly of kitchen staff, the leftovers of which were even treated as delicacies for the common folk. With all their wealth these rulers and conquerors amassed, they all had to leave behind worldly things as they passed. What remains and remembered of them are not their treasures, but their legacies, the good and the bad. These acts were then referenced to by future generations to gain insight and inspiration from. As future billionaires, what kind of legacy would you want to leave behind? Leave a comment below and awe us with your answers. Number 7. Andrew Carnegie 309 billion dollars. There are not a lot of wealthy American families as renowned as the Carnegies. Andrew Carnegie had his humble beginnings as a factory worker, tasked with spooling threads for wealthy factory owners. He managed to crawl his way up to becoming a steel magnate worth more than 300 billion dollars. But despite this, he managed to crawl his way up to becoming a steel magnate worth more than 300 billion dollars. He worked as a telegraph messenger at the beginning of his career. As a result of his accomplishments, diligence, and attention to detail, he was appointed superintendent of the Western Division of the Pennsylvania Railroad. At 24, the bosses at his job taught him about business that had an impact on his future investment, which caused him to commit a significant sum of money in the railroad sector right before it boomed. Following the Civil War, Carnegie left the railroad industry and founded various ironworks businesses, including the Keystone Bridge Works and the Union Iron Works. Additionally, he established the Carnegie Steel Company, which he later sold to J.P. Morgan for an amazing $13 billion. Despite his enormous and well-known riches, he used it in a very contemporary way. He discussed the social duty of the wealthy in his book, The Gospel of Wealth. He also led by his most well-known proverb, the man who dies rich dies shamed. He donated most of his wealth to charities, leaving but a small amount to his family, just about enough to live a comfortable life. Number 6. Jakob Fugger, $400 billion. The Rich. Of all the titles one could have in the past, nothing is grander than this. And it's one that Jakob Fugger had. This title was cemented by his fortune, estimated to be around $400 billion. Jacob's folks made a fortune dealing textiles with Italy in the good old 1400s. When Jacob reached legal age, he began venturing into mining silver, quicksilver, copper, and cinnabar. He had a knack for investment and he frequently invested his fortune over numerous sectors of the economy. And for him, everything turned out fairly nicely. 
When he finally became successful, he was even able to lend money to the Vatican, as resources were used to fund the construction of numerous Vatican structures, including the Sistine Chapel. He's not shy spending some of his cash too. One of the major benefactors was of course his wife. At the height of his wealth, the missus received jewelry priced more than 40,000 guilders apiece. His house at that time was an extravagant four-story home, equipped with fountains and fireplaces in each room. But one of the best ways he spends his money is through giving. He founded the first low-income housing program in the world, Fugarai. Those lucky enough to avail were only asked to pay one guilder. This is even practiced to this day. 88 cents of rent to pay per household. Number 5. John D. Rockefeller $400 billion Even if Elon has an innovative way of investing money and is considered the wealthiest man in the world today, he is still far off from America's richest ever, John D. Rockefeller. He specialized in one of the most basic commodities of all, oil. This expertise amassed him a staggering fortune of more than $400 billion. In 1870, he established the Standard Oil Company, which saw its value soar not long after. 90% of the oil in the United States had also been under Standard Oil Company's hands during its peak. His own wealth grew to the point that it represented 2% of America's GDP. Rockefeller led a lavish lifestyle. He owned homes all across the country. Most famously, he was the owner of Kaikut, a house with 40 rooms and views of New York City. The house, which took six years to build, included the collections of 20th century art and Chinese poetry. However, the Kaikut residence was only the start. The house was located on the Pocantico Estate, which it would later come to be known as. The estate was 3,510 acres large. It consists of 75 buildings, 70 roads, 9 golf holes with reversible courses, outdoor pools, tennis courts, a full-sized bowling alley, billiard rooms, a farm, and gardens. Many people didn't like Rockefeller, but as he got older, he really upped his philanthropic game and donated 10% of his wealth to charity annually. Number 4. Akbar I $500 billion in the 1500s, Akbar I ruled over a vast empire and amassed a huge fortune, which is thought to have been worth 500 billion USD. However, some estimates place his value even higher. As a descendant of the world's most feared conqueror, Genghis Khan, ruling and expanding his kingdom was a breeze for him. He put in a lot of effort as soon as he assumed the throne to conquer as many regions as he could, eventually tripling it in size. His reign, generally referred to as the Mughal Empire, covered all of India and northern Afghanistan. He was well recognized for his tolerance of all religions, which was practically unheard of at the time, an act that seemed taboo and attracted much criticism even today. Perhaps his kind is what the world needs today to heal and move forward as one. Considering that he was a Muslim was even more of a feat. He had numerous Hindu city officials and advisors who were close to him. He actively worked to bring the two religions together and grant people the opportunity to practice whatever they choose. He was well recognized for his assistance in the translation of Hindu literature and even participated actively in Hindu festivities. Maybe he was a follower of Rumi's poetic wisdom that aimed to thin the boundaries between religions. Or he gained this wisdom himself. Whichever the case is, no one could argue that his subjects were a lot more satisfied and safe because of his character and views toward religion. Little is known about how his wealth was spent, but it is known that he had a lot of it. His empire controlled 25% of the world's GDP for years. In today's world, that's like owning the entirety of America. Not just one, but for a multitude of years. The last three on our list are the only trillionaires to have ever walked the earth. They had so much wealth that modern historians couldn't even start to imagine its immensity. It's so vast that their wealth affected the economies of other kingdoms with just them passing through. If they were instead alive today, they would have been able to change whole countries just by passing through the area. They might even be richer than some countries today. Number 3. Augustus Caesar $1 trillion up the name Julius Caesar is almost synonymous to the Roman Empire, but it was his successor that was able to utilize its vast riches. The only confirmed trillionaire in history, Augustus Caesar owned a fifth of the Roman Empire's total assets, which was 30% of the world's total GDP at the time. That's more than what the USA represents in today's global GDP ranking. The majority of experts believe that his net worth was roughly $4.33 trillion. 
In addition to the wealth that his role as emperor brought, he inherited a large portion of his wealth. No one really knows the exact amount, because he received 75% of Julius Caesar's wealth after his death. For reference, Julius Caesar once gave every single citizen of the empire what today would have been 4 months worth of wages, like it was nothing. However, Julius wasn't the only one who handed Augustus money. Many powerful families were known to leave the emperor a portion of their inheritance in the hopes that it would guarantee the political safety of their descendants. He doubled the size of the Roman Empire in the course of his prosperous 40-year rule. He established a standing army, police and fire departments, a courier service, and highways, essentially bringing Rome into the modern era. Number 2. Emperor Shenzong of Song the second richest person in history is also one of our list's most mysterious figures. Ruling between 1067 through 1085 during the most peaceful and prosperous era in China's history, Emperor Shenzong of Song was fortunate to have accumulated insurmountable riches. They were the best bronzeware producers in the world, and farmers were given the freedom to possess their own land. They developed into a commercial superpower as the output of rice increased and became a staple of the economy. Additionally, during this time, printing, magnetic compasses, and gunpowder were developed by China. The Song Dynasty succeeded in developing and establishing the first navy, and created the first paper money in history as well. The navy, however, was the key factor to their trade. It was what allowed them to secure their trade routes, and this unhindered trade was one of the reasons the Song Dynasty grew exponentially. Emperor Shenzong was in charge of 30% of the world's GDP thanks to all these inventions. Shenzong had extensive influence over the currency due to the monopoly of goods and just raw dominance in trade. His riches are said to be unfathomable. Even while experts are unsure of the actual figure, it is known to be in the trillions of dollars. His increasing tax collection is largely responsible for his current financial situation. His tax schemes are centuries ahead of what the European governments were implementing at that time. Shenzong was noted for being generous despite his wealth and power. He is regarded as an innovator of the welfare system. His policies significantly improved the lives of the homeless, the unemployed, and the peasants. I guess even emperors could be magnanimous in times of peace and plenty. Number 1. Mansa Musa You may have never heard of the richest person in history, but after reading this, you won't soon forget him. Mansa Musa held control over an enormous, extravagant fortune that is unfathomable to modern historians. He took over as king of the Mali Empire in the early 1300s after his predecessor vanished while looking for the farthest point of the Atlantic Ocean. It was the largest producer of salt and gold, the two most significant commodities during the period. Within the first three years of his reign, Mansa Musa seized 24 cities and the regions around them, but he kept a low profile. In the Middle East, not even Egypt knew much about him. But when Mansa Musa set out on his pilgrimage to Mecca, everything changed. The pilgrimage was a significant aspect of his Muslim faith. He traveled 4,000 miles to get to Mecca, but he wasn't traveling by himself. He brought hundreds of troops, slaves, and messengers with him. Everyone carried a gold staff and wore Persian silk clothing. Hundreds of pounds of gold were brought by camels and horses. At least 80 camels, each with gold weighing between 50 and 300 pounds, were part of his caravan. It was a sight to behold as he traveled through Africa. He frequently overspent in cities and even gave gifts of gold. Al-Nasir, the Sultan, requested that he visit his palace when he heard that he was heading toward Cairo. Mansa Musa first objected but ultimately decided to go after Al-Nasir's persistence. Mansa Musa's refusal to kiss Al-Nasir's feet, which was customary at the time as a sign of respect, caused some tension. He finally gave in and Al-Nasir gave him a place to stay the night. Few people could ever forget his stay in Cairo, but when he finally went, the streets were lined with gold and the people were basking in the wealth he had showered upon them. Giving off that massive amount of gold, however, became problematic. It would require 12 years for the cities of Cairo, Medina, and Mecca to regain their financial stability because of his gifts, which decreased the value of metal. This seemingly innocent act of his is the best example of why we shouldn't be printing more money. When it comes to economics, without the proper research or studies, more often than not, our well-meaning actions lead to greater problems. Be sure to be more mindful of your actions when you become billionaires yourself. 
but it's not all bad when it comes to Mansa Musa's charitable actions. On his lengthy journey to Mecca, he supposedly aided in the construction of a mosque every single Friday. He devoted himself to his religion and studied for days on end after arriving in Mecca. When he arrived back home, he started working on constructing universities, mosques, and palaces throughout his empire. He founded the prestigious university known as Sankore Madrasha. Millions of manuscripts were held at that university, rivaling even the Library of Alexandria. Unfortunately, the Empire of Mali started to crumble not long after Mansa Musa passed away. Constant civil wars started to undermine the nation and hinder its ability to trade. By the 1600s, Europeans were invading Mali to take advantage of its resources, and what was once a great empire was reduced to rubble by greed and incompetence. Now that you've learned the history of the most wealthiest people to have ever lived in the world, you should now have an idea of the weight and responsibility of owning such massive wealth. At the billionaire level, what seem to be minor actions you take could have life-changing or devastating effects on others. Be sure to think twice before making a decision. This wisdom from the past applies to whatever level of today's social economic ladder you're on. Always be responsible. As always, we at Bear Luxury make sure that you are well equipped to become the world's next billionaire. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button to see more. See you in our next video. Your next video.